More new blockchain developers are going to Solana instead of Ethereum. There are more blockchain developers in Asia than in America. These are a few surprising results of a recent report on blockchain developers. So in this video, I'm going to comment this report. If you are new here, I'm Julian and I'll eat the blogs that help you to become a blockchain developer. So a lot of people ask me, Julian, should I focus on Ethereum or on Solana? Julian, on which blockchain should I deploy my smart contract? Julian, in which countries can I find blockchain jobs? Well, the best way to answer this question is to look at the data. And the most relevant data is what other developers are doing. So Electric Capital just released their yearly report on blockchain development. Electric Capital is a famous crypto VC and their yearly report is highly regarded. To create their report, they collected a large volume of data from GitHub. The report is huge with more than 200 pages, but in this video, I will give you the key takeaways. All right, so let's get started with this chart of the monthly active crypto developers. So at the moment, there are more than 23,000 monthly active blockchain dev. So there were only 1,000 when Ethereum launched in 2015. So that's a 39% annualized growth. There was a small decrease in 2024, but next year with the bull market, this number should go up. Still, we are very early because if you compare this with other niche like JavaScript or Python, it's much smaller. So here is a chart of the established developers versus new developers. So the established developers, those who have worked in the industry for more than two years, increase of 21%. Whereas New Year developers fell. So there is always a strong demand for senior once you are in your job is more secure. Then this is a chart that shows developers who work full time versus part time. So most developers are full time or part time and there is just a minority that is not employed. So now let's talk of the geography. So crypto is really global. Blockchain developers are everywhere, but Asia is number one, Europe is number two, and US in numbers is number three. I was really surprised at this. I thought that the US was number one. And I think that it didn't help that the Biden administration was anti-crypto. And on this chart, the share of US developer fell the most and Asia increased the most. So it doesn't matter where you are, you can be a blockchain developer anywhere in the world, you don't need to be in the US. So here we can see the top five countries for crypto developers. So the US is number one. And number two is India. I was really surprised. So India grew the fastest among all countries for crypto dev in the past few years. I was a little bit surprised to see China so low. But I guess one of the reasons is that China is not as open as India and also the level of English in India is higher than in China. Then let's talk of what developers are working on. So it's interesting to see what's the dominant ecosystem because it's going to be easier to find local project if you are in the biggest niche of your country. So on every continent, the biggest ecosystem is Ethereum then it's followed by Solana and after it's a mixed bag but mostly Ethereum L2s. And here we can see how big these ecosystem are on different continents and you can see a correlation between the wealth of the country and the popularity of Ethereum. For example, in Europe and in America, Ethereum is twice as popular as Solana but in Asia they are almost the same. And here we can see more granular data by countries so Ethereum is more popular everywhere except in India where it's Solana. Next, this is a chart of the new crypto developers and most of them are in Asia. And in comparison, Europe and North America are decreasing. Also interesting is to compare India and America. So in 2024, India has onboarded more crypto developers than the US and this is the first time and I think this trend will continue. And here, one of the most important results of this report is that Solana became the first ecosystem for new crypto developers in 2024. And this is largely related to the meme coin mania. 
Another interesting piece of data is that more and more crypto developers work on multiple chain, but in general, they still stay with the same tech stack. So for example, if they are EVM dev, then they will stay in EVM chains because it takes time to acquire expertise on any tech stack. So it's rare to see developers working on several tech stack at the same time. And here we see a comparison of the different tech stacks. So the EVM is compared to the SVM. So EVM, Ethereum Virtual Machine, SVM, Solana Virtual Machine. So EVM is number one, but SVM is growing quickly and also honorable mention for the move stack that is growing fast. So this is a chart of the number of crypto developers on the Ethereum ecosystem. So Ethereum mainnet and all the L2s. So they are about 6,000 developers and they represent about a quarter of all crypto developers. And here we can see a distribution of developers work on Ethereum mainnet versus the L2s. So we can see that the L2s are growing fast. And here we have a more granular comparison. So Ethereum mainnet is where you will find the most developers. And after in the L2s, base is number one. So now let's talk of Bitcoin. So there are 1,200 Bitcoin developers, which is much less than Ethereum. Here you can see on what Bitcoin developers are working. 42% of them are working on scalability, so on infrastructure, and the rest is working on Bitcoin application. So compared to other ecosystem, that's a very small share of dev that works on applications. And that's because the Bitcoin ecosystem is not very active. So now let's talk of blockchain use cases and we're going to start with DeFi. So currently there are about 3,500 monthly active developers working in DeFi. And you can see that almost half of these developers work on Ethereum but this market share has been shrinking. So now when you analyze the TVL, so the total value locked Ethereum is still leading, even though it's shrinking in terms of market share. And Solana has been the biggest gainer recently. In DeFi, one of the biggest use cases has been restaking, and that's thanks to the development of Eigenlayer, which is a protocol that enable restaking. Two other categories grew a lot this year, so lending and DEXs. So even though they are not new categories, they are still going strong. Now on this chart, you can see the total DEX transaction volume by chain. And you can see that for the first time, Solana flipped Ethereum, even though they are still very similar. I'm really surprised. I thought that Solana was leading only in the number of transactions, but it's also leading in the volume for transaction. And here, this is a chart that show you the number of transactions. So here Solana is very dominant and in comparison, Ethereum is much smaller. And that's because on average, the transactions on Ethereum are much bigger than on Solana. Next, let's cover NFT. So in 2024, the NFT deployment increased a lot. I'm very surprised because everybody was saying that NFTs were dead and it seems like 2024 was the biggest year ever in terms of deployments. And here we can see that most deployments happen outside of Ethereum. The biggest NFT chain is Base, and the second one is Zora, which is an Ethereum L2 focused on NFTs. The NFT minting volume is also exploding. We just reached an all time high. And now let's have a look at what kind of NFTs are minted. So I was expecting to see a lot of digital art, but actually I'm really surprised to see a lot of DeFi. So NFTs are very versatile. They can represent a lot of different assets and they can also represent complex DeFi assets. Now let's talk of another big use case of crypto stable coins. So stablecoins just reached an all-time high, almost $200 billion in circulations. Besides speculation, transferring money with stablecoin is another area where we find product market fit with crypto. So here, Tether is still very dominant. Number two is USDC. And after all, the competitors are much smaller. So beside all the feud that we heard about USDC and USDT, they are still there and they haven't collapsed. When it comes to stablecoin, Ethereum is still number one. 
And Tron is number two, and I know it sounds a bit surprising because we don't hear a lot about Trons these days, but it's used a lot in developing countries for money transfer because transaction fees are extremely low. This chart shows the transaction volume by token, and so the transaction volume of stablecoin is also increasing a lot. We just reached a new all-time high. Here you can see a ranking of US Treasury holdings by different market participants and stablecoin own $90 billion of treasury that's more than some big countries like Germany or Mexico. And that's very interesting because at a time where a lot of Western countries are struggling to find investors for their government bonds, they will be really interested that potentially stablecoin issuers might be buyer of their debt, which might force them to accept stablecoin and crypto. So we have seen a lot of bullish indicators in this report. The bull market is back. That's why it's a pretty good time to start a career in blockchain. And I have just launched the 30 Day Academy, a brand new blockchain academy where you learn blockchain development in 30 days with daily coding challenges. You learn by doing instead of passively watching a video tutorial. To register to the 30 Day Academy, use the link down below. All right, that's it for today. Bye.